Good evening. Welcome to the March 29th Village Board Special Session. What are we calling this? Uh, this meeting is now called to order. We'll begin with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Trustee Codman. Present. Trustee Bazemore. Present. Trustee Kazada. Present. And Mayor Garrity. Present. Do we have any mayors and trustees announcements? Um, yeah, I guess uh, I should make an acknowledgement of um, our trustee who's not here tonight. We're very sad that um, Rika's mother passed yesterday afternoon. Um, Rika and her mother are very close. She uh, lived locally. and. Um, we went on with the meeting tonight um, in large part because of a resolution that Rico worked very hard for. Um, and I'm looking forward to passing it in her absence. She knows that we'll be doing so and we'll have an opportunity to um, talk with the public more about it um, when Rika is able to be part of that conversation. Madam Clerk. Okay, we'll move on to Village Board resolutions. Whereas on August the 10th, 2016, the Village Board of Trustees unanimously passed a resolution opposing the proposal by the United States Coast Guard to designate 2,400 acres of Hudson River estuary uh, as anchorage areas for the commercial barges along the Hudson River shoreline from Yonkers to Kingston. And whereas currently pending in the New York State Legislature is Senate Bill 5197, the purpose of which, according to the sponsor memo, is to update the factors used to determine the conditions under which petroleum bearing vessels may enter or move upon navig navigable waters of the state, as well as for establishing tanker avoidance zones. And whereas the sponsor memo further notes that the proposed legislation amends Section 70 of the Navigation Law to provide that the Commissioner of the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation may also work in consultation with the Department of State and Office of Parks, Recreation, and Historic Preservation with regard to the establishment of conditions for petroleum-bearing vessels to enter or move upon navigable waters of the state, as well as tanker avoidance zones, and whereas the proposed legislation further amends Section 70 of the Navigation Law by providing that where tanker avoidance zones have been established, it shall be unlawful for petroleum-bearing vessels to enter, move, or anchor upon the navigable waters of the state, except in the cases of great emergencies. Such tanker avoidance zones may be based on physical and uh, environmental conditions, which may include but are not limited to navigational hazards, environmental conditions such as the existence of designated significant coastal and fish wildlife habitats and proximity to waterfront communities. And whereas the Village Board of Trustees noted in its August 10th, 2016 resolution, the designation of these new anchorage grounds, which would become water-based parking areas for commercial barges on the way to and from the ever busier port of Albany, portends an increase in barge traffic on the Hudson River with the potential to affect the ecological health of the river and the quality of life of its riverfront communities, including the Village of Austin. Now, therefore, be resolved that the Village of Austin Board of Trustees hereby voices its support for S.5197 A 685 uh, and urges that the legislation be approved by the legislature and signed into law by Governor Andrew Cuomo. And be it further resolved that the Village Board of Trustees says hereby direct that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to State Senator David Carlucci. Assemblywoman Sandra Galef and Governor Andrew Cuomo, and authorizes the mayor to sign any and all correspondence on this topic to communicate the Village Board's of Trustees' support for the legislature. Do I have a motion? So, so second. On the board, does anyone want to comment on this? Well, I will just uh, let the public know that um, we included this in tonight's agenda because there is some time sensitivity. There's some action that may be happening in Albany, and we it came to us from. Um, historic Hudson River towns uh, that they were reaching out to a lot of municipalities to try and um, make a strong statement about this reaffirming what is referenced in the resolution we had um, acknowledged earlier as the importance of preserving the um, 
the, not just the beauty of the Hudson River, but the uh, ecological well-being of it, which also directly impacts the um, economic viability of so many of our communities up and down the river, uh, both from a tourist perspective and recreation and uh, beyond. We've spent a lifetime of trying to clean up the Hudson River, and um, with, with this action that could really be undone for and do damage for generations to come. So I'm really pleased that the board was supportive of moving forward with this uh, resolution and we'll be forwarding it as it says to our representatives as well as um, to as a part of a group of uh, messages being sent from Hudson River communities up to Albany to make a strong statement. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Whereas President Trump's proposed budget calls for the elimination of natural a national endowments for the arts and the national endowment for the humanities and was eliminating funding for the NEA which represents 0.004 percent of the federal budget will not even begin to scratch the surface of the nation's fiscal challenges but will be have a devastating effect on the ability of many Americans to access the arts in their communities and whereas a 65 percent of the NEA's direct grant go to small and medium-sized art groups similar to those that we have in the village of Ossing and its surrounding areas and which are often the only source of arts funding in many suburban, rural, and unserved, underserved communities and whereas 40 percent of NEA supported activities take place in middle and lower income neighborhoods and every dollar invested by the federal government in the NEA is supplemented on average by seven dollars from other funding sources and whereas eliminating funding for the NEA NEA will not materially hurt Broadway or Hollywood, but will hurt small town theaters, museums, senior residences, and community arts organizations. And whereas eliminating funding for the NEA hurts veterans who experience the healing power of the arts through the participation in NEA funded creative art therapies. And whereas without the NEA, there will be less creativity, less imagination, and less freedom of expression, which hurts everyone, especially our youth, in local after-school programs. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Village Board of Trustees strongly opposes this extreme and narrow-sighted budget proposal and calls on the bipartisan supporters of the Arts in Congress to overwhelmingly reject it. The Village Board of Trustees also calls on every municipality to demand that equal access to education through the arts continue to be available to all and to join the nonpartisan campaign of the Creative Coalition at Right to Bear Arts, which supports the right of every citizen to have access to the arts. And be it further resolved that the Village Board of Trustees directs that a copy of this resolution be forwarded to Congresswoman Nita Lowy, Senator Charles Schumer, and Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. And the Village Board of Trustees authorizes the mayor to sign any and all correspondence on this topic to communicate the village's concerns. Is there a motion? So move. Second. Um, I know that uh, Rika would have a lot to say right now if she were with us tonight and um, she's looking forward to an opportunity to discuss this topic more publicly um, the reason we moved forward with passage of it tonight is so that we would have it in hand to be able to um, discuss it more effectively publicly um, this was uh, Rika's idea of a way that we could tangibly address some concerns about uh, things that are happening uh, on a national level, but that actually impact us very directly on a local level. Um, and I, I think I commend her for an incredible job at uh, identifying the very uh, local impacts that this loss of funding would, um, how it would be felt right here in Austin and surrounding communities. Uh, does anybody you want to comment on it? Please, John. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. As the, uh, the days have passed um, since Donald Trump became president, um, we continue to see the deconstruction of uh, programs that, that cost very little and, and give a whole lot back. And um, uh, regretfully, you know, it's sad that we actually should have to even do something like this. But we do need to make a statement. Um, we do need to fight back. Um, 
and we need, we need to tell our elected representatives and everybody we can that these programs are, are essential for human existence. The arts are truly a place of, uh, of solace. They're a place that doesn't have anything to do with economics or business or anything like that. It's, it's a reflection of culture and society, and it's a place of joy. And uh, for a sitting president to, to, to offer such a bill is, is truly a sad statement uh, in this country. So uh, I wholeheartedly support uh, the resolution. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? May I have a motion to adjourn into executive session? So moved. For the purpose of real property and personnel. <laughs> so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. With that, we say thank you very much um, for joining us for this uh, unusual fifth Wednesday meeting. We look forward to seeing you next week, April 5th. We'll be at the Birds All Fagan Police Court facility. This meeting is adjourned to executive session. Thank you.